Previously on Ward University. Derek's been arrested. <laughs> wow, Derek. You really got yourself into a pickle here. Listen to me, you arrogant bitch. I know this was all you, and you're gonna pay for it. One way or another. I can look after myself perfectly fine. And what are you still doing here, Raja? I thought you needed me. You're the only one who can get my head on straight. See, this is what I hate about you. You never think about the consequences of your actions. You just do shit and hope for the best. You said something about Professor Rutledge a few months ago. Look, I was just guessing, because he looks creepy as hell, that's all. Cool bar. And it's going to be a lot cooler with us playing on that stage over there. What? We have a gig already? This is definitely not the way you should be talking to him. Oh, I'm the one who shouldn't be talking like this? Because I'm pretty sure that the way you've been putting Cleo down for the past few months is not the way to go either. Ezra. The name's Ezra. Cute. I'm Vanessa. There was a girl not very long ago, and it didn't end well. This is your dream. This is what you're good at. I don't know if I can do this, Mom. What if I turn into him? You will never be like your father, Ez. I can promise you that. Hello? Is someone there? Please. Please. Not this again. With your feet in the air and your head on the ground. Try this trick and spin. Don't leave me. I can't do this! I can't do this anymore! You're dead, Vanessa. And I'm not ready to come with you. Not anymore. Did you ever even like me? Or was it all just a scheme to get close to my father? What, you thought I'd be just like him? Is that what this was about? You will never be like your father as... I can promise you that. Yeah, no, I'm awake. Rehearsal's at 10. Got it. No, I'm not scared. I can totally do this. Maybe it's not my weekend, but it's gonna be my year. I'm so sick of watching all the
So I've talked to a few people. Turns out your trial's gonna be a lot sooner than I anticipated. Oh, no shit. And you're still determined to keep your mouth shut, aren't you? You see, a case like yours? <laughs> I thought it would take months to actually take it to court. And yet here we are. It sounds an awful lot like someone's trying to use you as a scapegoat of some sort. Oh really? I didn't see that coming. Mr. Fraser, I'm just trying to do my job. And my job is to make sure the right person is locked behind bars. You need to let me help you. If- You think I'm not the right person? That I don't deserve what's coming to me? <laughs> I am a drug dealer. I almost got my best friend killed, for fuck's sake. I don't know what weird savior complex shit you're trying to pull, but you're wasting your time. I am not the good guy here. If they want to lock me up, let them. It's your job. You're gonna need a lawyer. Hey, Travis? Maybe we could gather some money. The four of us, if, if that's okay with you. Not a problem for me at all. My mother gives me so much, I don't even know how to spend it half the time. And Cleo's sister's a lawyer, I think. I wouldn't say their relationship is ideal, but she might help. Besides, I think Cleo would tie herself to a train track for you. She's only known you since Christmas, and I think she already likes you more than she likes me. Can't say a blame her. Thanks, Charlie. Always so kind. This is great, guys. We could actually pull this off. But how's a lawyer gonna help if he's not gonna talk? <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Feels like I crushed that tiny little bit of hope he had left. Friends should be honest with each other. It's never a good idea to raise our expectations too high. Especially when it comes to law enforcement. I guess you're right. I just feel so bad for him, you know? He loves Derek so much, and I think he needs that illusion that he can somehow fix everything. Even if he can't. I miss playing in that basement. It felt weirdly intimate. Like a safe space away from... Where do I begin? You mean Ryan? Is everything okay with you two? You know, I actually met the guy a little while ago and... Well... Let's just say... He wasn't very... Kind. In fact, he was a straight up asshole to Travis and I. <laughs> what? That's not funny. He was... <laughs> <laughs> All up in my face, calling me a bitch, and I had never even talked to him before. I'm sorry, I know he's... a lot. <laughs> but... he's also... not as bad as he seems, actually. You are shitting me. <laughs> no, I'm not. There's... <laughs> there's something about him. I... I can't quite put my finger on it, but I guess there are some aspects of him that I relate to on some deep, fucked up level. You see, I think Ryan is just really scared of being alone, and he will do anything to not let that happen, which is usually a recipe for disaster, but I can't fully blame him. Lonely kids living in huge, empty mansions. We need to stick together, or we'll end up talking to the wallpaper. All right, I'll trust your judgment, but... Careful not to let your empathy get to you, okay? Not saying this is your case, necessarily, but empathy tends to make us come up with a lot of excuses to justify shitty behaviour. And guess what? Shitty behaviour often comes from shitty people. You have a lot of experience with that? <laughs> oh, yeah, you have no idea. Professor Drawn? Yes? I'm sorry, but I couldn't finish working on my choreography for today. It, it, it's just that I'm a little stuck on- It's fine. 
Will you excuse me for a moment? She's been so weird lately. She used to be so mean to me, you know, to everybody, and now she just nods and agrees to everything, and it's almost like she doesn't even care anymore. Isn't that a good thing? Uh, no. I miss everyone. I feel like we don't hang out as much ever since Christmas. I mean, Cleo's got Ezra now, which is great, of course. And I was kind of mean to Raja, and Casey's always running around doing God knows what. Not to mention Tia. She's been weird for a while. Would you happen to know anything about that? Now, some of you might think of the hero's journey as a trite concept at this point. A cliche. But there's a reason that this narrative pattern has been popular among writers for more than a century now. Can anybody tell me what that reason might be? No? It's relatable. Plain and simple. We write about what we know. We've all had that moment in our lives. Some of us even more than one. Where we just couldn't bring ourselves to take that one step that will begin our journey. Crossing the threshold is the most crucial part in any story. If you never get out of your front porch, how is the story ever going to begin? And this is where the so-called mentor figure comes in, representing the bond between parent and child, God and human, (laughs) and even a teacher and his student at times. The mentor is tasked with the important job of preparing the hero to face the unknown, to cross the threshold. Now, if the hero decides not to listen to their mentor, uh, Miss Antar, where are you going? Just crossing the threshold, Professor. Tissues? No. I'm fine. What happened? I don't think you want to hear about it. Professor Rutledge and I... We do have a little bit of a history, but... It's not how you think it is. We didn't... You know... Nothing really happened between us, but it could have. It was last year. I was a freshman, doing pretty well. I had a few friends, and he seemed nice. Maybe he heard my professors talking about me. I remember they were happy with my results, and he approached me for a project he was working on. An illustrated short story collection. I couldn't believe he would ask me, of all people. Barely started out college and the famous Barry Rutledge wanted me to make art for his book. I was over the moon. Told my whole family about it. Everyone was so proud. We would work long hours. At first he used to meet me here at school. Then, we moved to a cafe downtown. Next thing you know, I was regularly going to his place. And it's not like he blatantly made a move on me. It was... way more subtle than that. Small gestures, lingering looks... I just got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore, and he... He neither denied or confirmed anything. He just said... Whatever I thought had happened between us, that I shouldn't talk about it, for my own good. I wouldn't want people to think I got to publish my work because I had a fling with my professor. That would destroy my credibility as an artist. And I believed him. 
I still do. And the worst thing is, that book did get published in the end. It's out there, and I'm going to be linked to it for the rest of my life. A constant reminder of how stupid and naive I was to think someone would actually value my art. <laughs> I hate that it exists. I hate it so much. And I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I want to help you. I really do. But I wouldn't even know where to start. Sometimes, at night, I find myself wondering how many people he must have broken. How many young girls who were only guilty of trusting him. Of thinking he was their friend. If we could get them to talk, but... But how do we even find them? <laughs> I don't know, Tia. I don't know. What's wrong, Eva? You look upset. Oh, hi, Hilda. It's it's fine, really. Just feeling a little demotivated these days. I've been thinking long and hard about my life up until now, and, well, I've realized I'm not where I wanted to be, and there's not much I can do about it, you know? Oh, I know. You'd think my lifelong dream was to be stuck in this school, teaching to rich kids who couldn't care less about what I have to say. I mean, it's not too late for you. You're still young, Hilda. You should start auditioning again, like you used to do before coming here. Yeah, I don't think Miss Watt would be happy about that. Hey, quick note. Maybe you girls should be more appreciative for a change. It's not very nice to complain about a headmistress after everything she's done for us, is it? She gave us a chance to shape young minds and make a living when we needed it the most. Take Lex, for example. He would have been doomed if Judith didn't let him work for her after that fiasco that was his music career. And Hilda, you're not that young anymore. Not to mention Professor Bates, a raving lunatic who couldn't write a coherent script if his life depended on it. And you, Ava, do I really need to say it? If you want to end up like Miss Mabry, sure. Why not? Be my guest. But take this word of advice. It's rough out there. Voll Idiot. What the hell am I doing here? Come in. Good afternoon. I assume you're Jasper Bell? Yes, and aren't you... Wait, didn't you used to teach at my school? I did. But I've decided to make use of my degree. Teaching was never my thing anyway. Now, what are you doing standing there? Sit down. Would you like to talk about why you're here? Don't you already know? I'd like to hear it from you, if you don't mind. I'm... an addict. Interesting. What is so interesting about that? You didn't say drug addict. Just addict. Now, why do you think that is? How long is this going to be? Um, hey. Did you... Did you finally clear things up with Fatima? I see you're filming stuff. I take it the script's ready, or...? Nah, 
Fatima kind of ghosted me, and I got tired of waiting. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm used to this. I wanted to thank you for being there when my brother... Well, you know. And I'm sorry I took my anger out on you that night. You were right. You didn't deserve to be treated like that. I feel like we've all been taking you for granted. Because you're so nice to everyone and you always look so happy and carefree while you're really not. And I should have known better. Do you want to go out with me? I, I mean, Cleo's boyfriend is going to play at the pub in a few nights and Cleo asked if we could all go with her, so... No, I... I mean, just the two of us. Like, a date. And it was just so sudden. I didn't even have time to think about it. I was just apologizing, like you do. And then she turned around, sexy as hell. Wait, I didn't mean... So, I'm assuming you said yes? Of course I said yes! Who could say no to those big, beautiful brown eyes? What's the issue, then? I just... I just have so much on my plate already, and Raja and I have been growing pretty close lately, and I guess I did think about her that way a few times, but I pushed it down, you know? Because I didn't know if you noticed or anything, but I don't really have time to start questioning my sexuality at the moment, and with everything that's been going on, I just need some peace and quiet. You're making things harder than they need to be, and you know, just because you have feelings for Raja- I didn't say I have feelings! Just because you have something for Raja, doesn't mean you have to label it right now, or ever. And people don't fall in love with gender. People fall in love with people. So let's say hypothetically that you like Raja. That doesn't mean you like girls, necessarily. That just means you like Raja. Hey, I didn't think I'd find you here. You didn't think you'd find me in our room. Well, you haven't slept here for a while, so... (sighs) I know, but Ryan's a little busy after that whole mess with Derek and Jasper's sleeping in his room, so... They're having a little bit of a boy's night. Ugh, I hope I never get to find out what that's like. So, I was trying out some outfits for our concert. Yeah? I should probably do that too. I literally have no idea what to wear. That's great, cause me, (laughs) neither. My clothes are not fit for a rock concert. It can't be that bad. Come on, show me what you got. Okay, nah, uh, nah, that's not gonna fly. (laughs) See? What did I tell you? Hold on, I'm sure I've got something more appropriate. This should be fun. So, what's up with the door? Oh, it's probably just Lori and her minions. Wow. So much for letting things go, huh? It's been like... Mom's? Since she fell out? It's complicated. How so? It's hard to describe it. Lori and I... We... We had a thing. To put it simply, I was in love with her. And she was just having fun. There was probably a moment in there where we were actually friends, but most of it's gone now. And all we're left with is bitterness, and resentment, and grief. I'm, uh, sorry. I don't think she actually wrote that. On the door. May and Drusilla, sure, but Lori? She used to be really mad at me, but now it just feels like she's tagging along with the others. 
And that's fine. She's always done whatever she's needed to do to survive. So you see, Artemis has this tough and kind of mean exterior when we first see it, but as the series goes on, we start noticing how complex and sensitive and fragile she can be, while still staying pretty badass, of course. You know, she kind of reminds me of... <laughs> you. Jasper, wake up. Huh? You've been sleeping all morning, dude. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hey, um, it is nice having you here, but when are you going to look for a place to stay? Kicking me out already? You know I wouldn't, but we can't have outsiders squatting here, and I'm not saying you're an outsider, but... I get it. I'm gonna get you and Ryan in trouble. I'm sorry. Hey, it's all right. I'll come back later to pack my stuff. Glad you're still alive. See ya. It's been a while. I see you haven't changed. I heard about what happened to you. Sorry I couldn't come visit. Erica only told me after the holidays. She shouldn't have told you about it at all. I would have found out sooner or later. You see those weird anti-drug posters plastered around the school? My impact. So what are you up to these days? Haven't seen you a lot in class. Currently, I'm looking for a place to live, and a job, and the meaning of life while I'm at it. <laughs> Aren't we all? Well, I have a sculpting class with Professor D'Angelo in ten minutes. See you around, I hope. I hope. How weird is that? She went from not talking to me or even looking at me for months. And now she hopes to see me around? Does she... Does she pity me now that I almost died? Is that what you think happened? I mean, what am I supposed to think? You tell me. It's not my place to tell you what to think. All I can do is hand you the tools you need to build yourself a healthy mindset. Why do you think you're so beyond repair, Jasper? I don't know. I guess... The thing that worries me is... I don't really see what everyone else sees. They'll tell me I'm sick, that I'm wasting my life, and um, I've been like this as long as I can remember. The way my mind works... It's all normal to me. I'm used to it. So you only think you need to heal because other people told you so? That's the gist of it. Yeah. And I'm tired of hurting everyone around me. I really am. But it's not like I've been doing it on purpose. And how do I stop something I'm not even entirely aware of? The thing is... We can't just, one day, out of the blue, decide to stop hurting people. Just as much as we can't decide to stop getting hurt. What we can do is being mindful and taking accountability. What are you thinking about right now? I'm thinking about my friend, Derek. He's in jail because of me. And I didn't even try to contact him. Do you want to? I'm not sure. I don't think he wants to hear from me. 
to be honest. That's not what I asked you, though. I wouldn't even know what to tell him. What do you usually tell your friends? I just complain and make them mad at me. And what happens when they get mad? What kind of question is that? What happens is I feel like I shouldn't open up to them anymore. I feel like I'm a burden, which I am. Would you say most of your friendships are one-way relationships? You sure your boyfriend's playing tonight? We've been here for like an hour and he doesn't seem to be around. I've got to be honest, I had no idea there would be so many people. You didn't answer my question. Of course he's playing. You wouldn't lie to me. Oh, you sweet summer child. Travis, hey! See, I wasn't making it up. Oh, hi, Cleo. I'm so glad you're here. Do you like our merch? I love it. Did you make it? Nah, it was Derek's voice actor. So, um, quick question. Did you happen to see... Ezra anywhere? Oh boy, what happened? I'm sure it's nothing. He's just kind of gone. Should we split up and look for him? Probably a good idea. Can someone look over the stand while I'm gone? I'll do it. I'm a natural salesperson. And I'll look over her looking over it. Just in case she decides to pocket something. <sighs> what did I do to deserve this? Oh, hi. Travis was looking for you. He seemed a little worried. Is everything okay? Just getting cold feet about this whole thing, I guess. You mean the gig, or...? <sighs> you know, back in September, I almost gave up on everything, really. I didn't want to come here anymore. I didn't want to play the guitar or go to school. I just wanted to quit. And I'm glad I didn't. I am, but some days it's still hard to get it through my head that this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm sure you know the feeling. The first time I saw you, you seemed so confident and mysterious. I thought you looked like some sort of- Dollar store Batman? How did you- I get that a lot. But you see, that makes it even weirder. With me, it takes one look to tell I'm an insecure mess. And I guess that's because my insecurities are a little bit more superficial, maybe. Uh, but, but you, just just look at you. I have no idea what someone like you could even be insecure about. You, you just seem so... Perfect. <laughs> you wish. It's stupid, but my... Dad... He's a musician. Well, was a musician, and I really hate his guts. He hurt someone I cared about, and we have so much in common. It's scary sometimes, and annoying, because I just want to play. That's literally the one thing I'm good at, but I always have to worry about people finding out who my father is, because then they won't see me as Ezra Hunter who plays the guitar. They'll be like, oh look, it's the murderer's son. Didn't kill anyone, but still. Not really as good as... Thorn Bailey. That's... Your father, right? You knew Vanessa Zhang. She was my neighbor before she got famous. And we... Kinda were in a relationship. Wait, didn't she also... Yeah. She hooked up with my father. But 
she didn't know we were related, so that makes it a little less weird, I think. No one really knows except for him, my mom, and now you. Not even Travis? Are you kidding? I couldn't tell him. Might as well tattoo it on my forehead. It was my fault that he got away. What do you mean? He came to me, the night she died. Ezra! Ezra! Look, it's not how it seems. I, I need to talk to you. I, I, I can explain. Your mom's not home? She's on a trip with some friends. Now what the hell are you doing here? I just need a place to crash for the night. The police are after me, and- Yeah. I should call them right away. No! Ezra! Son! Don't call me son. We haven't talked in years. Listen to me. You don't understand. That woman, she used me. Ruined my entire life just so she could get famous at my expense. I don't have to listen to this. <coughs> Quiet now. You know what's going to happen if you walk outside. As sad as it is to admit, it's probably not the best time for you to come out as my son. Is it? Good boy. He got into my head. And I got scared. And if it wasn't for me, he'd be in prison right now. And I helped him. And all because I wanted my life to be normal, for once. And now it's never going to be the same again. You must think I'm a piece of shit right now. I think my brain would melt if I ever found myself in a situation like that. That must have been so scary. I don't know how you're still keeping it together, to be honest. Trust me, I'm not. Hey, just throwing this out there. But I'm sure Travis would understand if you told him you don't feel like playing tonight. No way. I just need to relax, loosen up a little. Why don't you play something for me? Just as a warm-up. That's actually not a bad idea but don't expect too much. I'm still a little, ugh, you know? Understandable. When I was younger, I saw my daddy cry and curse at the wind. He broke his own heart and I watched as he tried to reassemble him. And my mama swore that she would never let herself again. And that was the moment I promised I'd never sing of love. Does not exist, but darling, you are the only exception. Yeah, you are the only exception. Maybe I know somewhere deep in my soul that love never lasts. Find other ways to make it alone or keep straight face. And I've always lived like this, keeping the comfortable distance. And up until now, I had sworn to myself that I'm content with loneliness. Cause none of it was ever worth the risk You are the only exception
exception Well you are the only exception You are the only exception Oh you are the only exception Oh, my God, is that Professor Mobry? And Professor Reeves, look at that, do you think they're, uh... Boning? Of course they are. Remember how they hugged in that sad montage in episode seven? I was gonna say dating. <laughs> Joining us tonight for their first onstage appearance, the Black Sheep. Where is Ezra? He better be dead, because I'm going to kill him when I find him. Girls, what do we do? Well, this is awkward. It looks like our opening number is missing, unfortunately. We're going to have to leave the stage for our headliners then. Straight from Veronaville, everyone give a round of applause to Morgan and Bugo. Intenzioni, la maleducazione, la tua brutta figura di ieri sera, la tua ingratitudine, la tua arroganza, fai ciò che vuoi mettendo i piedi in testa. Certo di dormire è una forma d'arte, ma tu sei solo coltivare invidia, di grazie al cielo sei su questo palco, rispetta chi ti ha portato bene. Oh, for fuck's sake, is anyone going to stay on that goddamn stage for more than three seconds or- He's here! He's here! We're ready to go! Wait! I'm told the black sheep are ready now? I guess we could have just waited a few minutes instead of- What, what are you waiting for? Go! Am I supposed to introduce the song, or...? But it goes, don't get hurt, can't feel anything When we're alone, I push it down, push it down I'm the one for a good time, call phones blowing up Ringing my doorbell, I feel the love, I feel the love One, two, three, one, two, three, drink One, two, three, one, two, three
drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. Hey, buddy. How are you holding up? You find a place to stay in? Not really. Money's a little... tight. Well, that's too bad. But hey, you can always come work for me if you feel like it. What a night. That was exhilarating. God, is it always like this? I don't know, but I am pretty sure this has been one of the best nights of my life. Oh, me too. We should do something. Together. Let's go watch a movie. No, let's go to the club. <laughs> All right, okay. Let me just check in with Travis for a sec. You know, I'm sure Derek would have loved this. Yeah. Wish he could have been here. I know. Candy is so hyped, by the way. She wants to have a little celebration if you're down for it. You sure you don't want me to leave you two alone? What? No, of course not. What are you talking about? Well, good! Because I sure do need a drink. That was so good! Like, so good! You guys were amazing up there! And it was all thanks to you. I don't think I would have made it up on that stage if you didn't come find me. Also, thank you. For everything. Sometimes I forget how good it feels to just open up to the right people. One of my professors was talking about the hero's journey a few days ago and the role that mentors have in our lives. They are supposed to guide us towards the unknown and to help us walk to all the places we're afraid of. But he talked about it like this person, this mentor, has to be someone above us. Like God, or our parents, or our teachers. And I think he got that wrong. Because anyone who stands above us also has power over us. And they can take us down just as easily as they can bring us up. Our real mentors have to be people who stand by our side. Our equals, like friends or lovers. And if you find someone, anyone, who can be that person for you, I say you should hold them as tightly as you can for as long as you can.
It was my fault that he got away. He came to me the night she died. If it wasn't for me, he would be in prison right now. I helped him. And all because I wanted my life to be normal for once. And now it's never going to be the same again.